What's up, what's up, what's up, you guys? What's up, Epic Squad? It's your boy Cam here, your Epic Leader. And I just wanna ask you a quick question, real quick. Are there any people who are your friends right now that you did not like when you first met them? Don't point them out if they're in the room. Yeah, that's actually a pretty common thing. In fact, you probably have some friends that didn't like you when they first met you. Maybe it's not that they dislike you, they just didn't understand you. They thought that you were strange or stuck up or rude or annoying. And then they spent time with you and realized there's more to the story. That you weren't the person they originally thought you were. That's what we're talking about in this series. Because the reality is, there are some topics that we possibly all had some impressions of or opinions about. The way we see things are slightly off, twisted, or just plain wrong. There's more we need to understand. There's more to the story. There are topics that you expect to talk about in church, right? Topics like prayer, love, the Bible. That makes sense, right? And then there are things that you don't expect to talk about in church. NFL football, NBA young boy, streaming content on Twitch, how to get more TikTok followers. Today we are going to be talking about NBA Youngboy. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But we are going to be talking about a topic that you don't expect to talk about in church. Are you ready? We're talking about porn. Maybe you're surprised I just said that. Or maybe you just rolled your eyes because straight up, you're like, it's not a big deal. Or maybe you're acting disgusted right now to keep your church image intact. But whether or not you think it's a problem, here are some, a few things that you should know. Depending on what kind of music you listen to, you hear references to things that are somewhat pornographic on a pretty consistent basis. It doesn't seem like a big deal when your artists like DaBaby and Cardi B rap about it or when a comedian jokes about it. Why is it such a big deal that I'm talking about it? If you watch TV, movies, Netflix, Hulu, etc., you've probably seen things that could be labeled as porn. Just because it wasn't an X-rated website on your phone doesn't mean that it didn't have undertones of porn or pornographic imagery. I'm not saying that to make you feel guilty. I'm just trying to make a point that this topic isn't as foreign and far away as you think. The average age of exposure to porn is 11 years old. So we're talking about something that is already affecting someone around you. By no means am I assuming that all of you have had encounters with porn. I'm just making a point that this is a preteen thing, a teenage thing, and an adult thing. This affects everyone on the planet who has access to the internet. And if something affects everyone on the planet, we feel like it's okay, and maybe even necessary, to talk about it. If you're new to church and a little shocked that we're talking about this, I get it. And don't worry, we'll get back to topics like praying and reading the Bible to make you feel more at ease. I'm kidding. I know this topic isn't easy. But here's something that I would love for you all to get today. We're not just affected by porn, we're actually influenced by the culture of porn. Here's what I mean. This is not something that could potentially tempt some of us. This is not something that just affects some of us. This is something that influences all of us. Why? Because porn culture is around all of us. Snapchat, sexting, Movies, music, advertisements, conversations, apps, etc. It's everywhere. Plus, the porn industry generates $12 billion a year. That's more than the combined annual revenues of ABC, NBC, and CBS. It's around us all the time. And it's impossible to spend time around something and not be affected by it. When it comes down to it, Porn is sexualized content designed to get a specific response. A lot of people start watching porn because they're curious. So it's kind of like sex education. The problem is that porn was never designed to educate you. It was something to hook you and make you addicted. It was designed to manipulate you. 
we're being influenced by something that's teaching us a fake education. And what's interesting is that you and I are typically quick to see right through things that aren't legit. For example, how many of you love McDonald's? No one's mad at you if you do, but no one's mad at you if you don't. Maybe just pretend it's actually Wendy's or Burger King. Let's say that a McDonald's manager came here and talked about eating healthy. And he or she talked about only eating these things like Big Macs, fries, and McFlurries. None of you would fall for that. You'd see right through it. You'd be like, why are we allowing this person to teach us about healthy nutrition? Going to porn is like going to McDonald's to eat healthy. It would have adverse effects. Going to porn for sex or sex education is the same. It has adverse effects and can actually hurt you. The truth is that there's more to the story. And that's what we're going to talk about for the next few minutes. There's a book in the Bible called Proverbs. The Bible is actually a collection of books and it's split into two sections, the Old Testament and the New Testament, which basically just means books before Jesus walked the earth and books after. Proverbs is an Old Testament. It is a book of poetry that is primarily about wisdom, which simply means truth that makes your life better. These Proverbs was written by an ancient king named Solomon, who was famously known as an extremely wise person. But what does an ancient king have to say that would be relevant to our lives now? Some of it may be confusing, but a lot of it actually makes sense in the lives of teenagers and adults alike. For example, the verse we're going to look at today says this, the simple believe anything, but the prudent give thought to their steps. Proverbs 14, verse 15. Simple is basically naive. For example, a simple person believes everything they read online. They think every science experiment works like they see on TikTok. They fall for any prank because they're easily tricked, gullible. They believe anything. And when it comes to porn, maybe you've heard or thought statements like this. It's not hurting anyone. There are worse things I could be doing. I'm not doing anything. I just look. At least I'm not having sex with a real person. We've been naive when it comes to porn. We believed everything. But hear this, porn never tells the whole story. There's a website called fightthenewdrug.org. They've compiled decades of studies from respected institutions about pornography. Their website has assembled over 1,000 pornographic related articles. And here are some of the research facts they discovered. Studies have found that porn use is correlated with intimacy problems. Frequent exposure to pornography is associated with less trust in intimate partners. The sex acts shown in porn pornography are unrealistic and often abusive. Compulsive pornography users are at risk for depression and stress. Porn doesn't tell you facts like this when you look at it. It wants you to be distracted and addicted. It doesn't want you to have a full, complete life. Consider this, porn will not make you better at sex. It might actually make you worse because it damages your relationships. Porn will not make sex better for you. It will actually make it less desirable because it doesn't give you realistic expectations of sex. Porn will not help you to understand what it is like, what sex is like. It will actually conf confuse you and leads you further away from understanding it. God isn't against porn because he thinks that the act of sex is bad. He's anti-porn because pornography has twisted what he intended sex to be. He is anti-porn because it devalues people he cares about, which is everyone. He's anti-porn because it's bad for you and bad for others. God is 100% loving God and there's absolutely nothing loving about pornography. The second part of the verse says this, the prudent give thoughts to their steps. This means that a person evaluates information carefully so that they don't fall into a trap. And that's exactly what porn is, a trap. It's a trap that wants something from you, time, attention, money, addiction, etc. 
And in exchange, it gives you a false sense of sexual closeness. Culture doesn't tell you that because they don't see it themselves. A prudent person is basically someone who's wise. And many, many years after Solomon wrote the book of Proverbs in the Old Testament, a man named Paul wrote a letter that became part of the New Testament. He wrote it to a group of people that he loved and cared about a lot. And he said this, be very careful then how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise. Ephesians 5 verses 15. When Paul says, be very careful, it's similar to Solomon saying, give thought to your steps. Don't believe everything you hear. Porn never tells the whole story. When you're being manipulated, step the other way. Be prudent, be wise. Get yourself away from something that is so destructive. It would be crazy for someone to teach us about being healthy from a menu that at a fast food restaurant, right? We would see right through it. We need to have the same mentality when it comes to the porn culture. There is a lot of steps we could all take, but for the sake of today, we're simply going to focus on two. One, refuse to be fooled. Train your brain. When you see the ad or the Snapchat, argue with it, question it. What is this trying to sell me or convince me to do? All of you are teenagers. You're smart. You see through so many things that are fake or manipulative. You have to access those same smarts when it comes to the porn culture. Remember, it's everywhere and it wants something from you. It doesn't care about you or wants what's best for you. It wants to trap you. Be wise, be smart, be careful. And two, refuse to participate. Create a plan to set yourself up for success before you even reach the trap. Think ahead. What will you do when you come across pornographic content or are tempted to believe the lies of porn culture? How will you put a stop to the manipulation? Sometimes it isn't enough to know you're being tricked. You need help to get unmanipulated. Maybe you need to take concrete action and put some restrictions around your access to technology. If an industry makes $12 billion a year, you can believe that it's very persuasive and convincing. Remember, it's a trap and it's not possible to get out of every trap by yourself. Talk to a trusted adult or a small group leader. Let them know what's going on. It may be something that you need to get off of your chest or confess something, or maybe something needs to get off your shoulders. It may be that you need to ask them for some accountability to check in with you from time to time. We need each other to help fight against this industry. None of us want to be a part of something that manipulates us. We don't want to associate with something that hurts us and others. We're smart and we don't want to be controlled. But porn culture is sneaky. And now that we've named that, we can open our eyes, see it for what it is, and step the other way. And imagine if we did, how liberating would it be for us to move forward without being trapped by something that's so destructive and to so many people? We would hurt ourselves and others less, and that's a big deal. Porn never tells the whole story. On the other hand, we have a God who loves us immensely and out of his love for us, wants good things for us. He wants to see us thrive, not suffer. Porn is hurtful and damaging. God wants better for us. He has given us incredible minds to see through the lies and incredible wills to walk away. So choose wisdom, be proactive, be willing to have hard conversations. This is worth the fight.